There's a long history of extension categories in the speedrun community, and most of these speedruns are what you would expect, total meme categories. And I have even covered some of the best ones on the channel before. And while some of these categories are self-explanatory, there is one category in the Zelda community which has a rich history that stands out above the rest. And that is the 14 small key speedrun in Wind Waker. Now you might be wondering, what is the speedrun even? Well, your first guess might be that it's a simple speedrun where you just try and collect all of the small keys in the game. But if we break it down, there are four keys in Dragon Roost, one in Forbidden Woods, two in Tower of the Gods, three in Earth Temple, and two in Wind Temple. So if we combine all those numbers together, we get 12? Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Well, what if I were to tell you, the, the objective isn't simply just to collect 14 keys in the game. The objective is to, to have all 14 keys in your inventory in a single dungeon and all being available to the player in the bottom right corner. And this silly question of how many small keys the player can hold all at once actually started around 10 years ago, when players noticed that the Wind Waker key counter actually had two digits, not just one. Despite in a normal playthrough, the most amount of keys the player can ever hold in one moment in time is a single key. And so, the hunt began. The Wind Waker speedrunners wanted to know just how many keys we could collect at once. And for many years, this number stayed at three. People figured out quickly that performing a glitch known as a zombie hover, they could reach areas they were not supposed to yet, and this allowed them to collect the second, third, and fourth small key from Dragon Roost out of order while only having to use the first one. But later on, more people figured out that there was a glitch that allowed you to transfer small keys in between dungeons with some interesting techniques that I'll get into later. But even with all of that, the number of keys they were able to collect at once was still below 10. So. How was speedrunners able to overcome this challenge, and how were we able to reach 14 keys and finally enter the double digits? Well, that's what I'm here to show you today. Without further ado, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and let's get right into the speedrun. So, to start this run off, the very first trick that we have to do to actually get the run started is to do a glitch known as Vanilla Super Swim. Now, I've covered this specific trick a thousand times, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but TLDR, all you need to know is one thing. Every time you turn around in the water, for the very first frame, the game is going to add three units of negative speed to your value. And this was just simply an effect to make you slow down so you can't turn around in full speed. However, Nintendo forgot to put a speed cap for how fast you can go backwards, just like Super Mario 64 works with its BLJs. So we're going to use that to our advantage to try and get just enough speed by turning Link around hundreds of times so we can leave Outside Island early. All right, so once I have enough speed, I'm going to basically enter target camera so that I can keep charging up speed more, but it's gonna be done automatically by the game instead. And then I'm gonna try and line myself up so that I can go to the corner of this beach right here to get an air refill. And then I'm going to super swim away from Outset Island and make it all the way to Dragon Roost. And there we go. Hey. Hey. So, once I have done all of what I just did, so what I did just now is I basically got, I got to Dragon Roost, I got my Wind Waker, and then immediately I'm going to obtain a glitch known as Storage, and I'm going to then use this Storage glitch to be able to Super Swim. And this is going to allow me to Super Swim just like I was doing with the manual Super Swim one, but it can be done automatically by just holding up on the analog stick, and then the Wind Waker's camera mode is doing the turning around for me. I'm then going to Super Swim over here, and the reason I want to go over here specifically is because there's going to be a submarine here. And this submarine is very special, because this submarine has four Bacoblins. And these Moblins have a lantern, and there's something you need to understand about Wind Baker that is very important. Which is that if you go up to an enemy with a lantern, like a Moblin, there are two types of those in the game. There is the guards, and there is the normal enemy. But how does the game know which one to use? How they decide how they should behave is dependent upon if you have a sword in your inventory or not. Now, I do not have a sword because of all the early game glitches I just did. Meaning that when I end up going to that submarine and I go up to those guards, the game sees I don't have a sword in my inventory and thinks, hold on, he must be in Forsaken Fortress 1 because there's no other point in time 
where the player would not have a sword and interact with this enemy. So it just basically wrong warps me into Forsaken Fortress 1. And now I'm going to go ahead and just basically beat it as quickly as I can. Now here, some other cool tricks are coming up. So what I'm going to do right here is first, I'm going to just pick up this 10 rupee right here. And then I'm going to side hop with my Wind Waker in my hand. I'm going to get storage on this chest. Now, storing a chest is different compared to usual storage. So when you store, when you get storage and you take out your Wind Waker, the game is simply just going to let you walk in the Wind Waker mode. Now, if you get storage and you try and open up a chest, it's going to store the element of opening that chest up, which is a couple of different important effects you need to understand. Number one is that the game internally temporarily changes Link's hitbox for how it functions while Link is opening up a chest and then it returns to a normal state after it's done. But since I stored the chest and it could never finish, I maintain this glitch state from opening up a chest. And because my hitbox is also so much smaller than it used to be, I can also walk up walls and slopes that are way steeper than I would usually be able to. <laughs> yeah, you might be confused why this sword is even here when I never watched that cutscene of the barrel and losing it. That's because this game is very, very generous, where it does not care, like, it doesn't physically drop that sword during a cutscene. It just spawns there if you go around the early parts of Forsaken Fortress 1. It automatically spawns there. But before we get through into today's video, I want to thank HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. You know, I'm actually really excited to work with HelloFresh because I've been using them for over two months at this point. You might not have known about it because I've been trying to lose some weight and be more healthy and using HelloFresh has been absolutely fantastic. And it is super simple to use. Each week, you're given 50 meals to choose from on their website and you can also customize it by adding extra snacks or swapping out the protein however you like it. Personally for me, I like to set it up so that I choose all my meals on the weekend and then on Monday, HelloFresh gets delivered straight to my door. It's that that easy and each meal comes in its own package with a recipe sheet right next to it so you can't mix up the product it's absolutely no waste whatsoever it's so easy to follow along and they have multiple options for the meals as well like keto calorie smart or even certain meals to bring in that fall season that we're in right now HelloFresh got you covered in all of it. And not only has HelloFresh saved me not only wasting less food and money but it can for you as well because they come up with this coupon code called POG Linkus Oct 65. And if you use that coupon code, a link is in the description or on screen right now, you will get 65% off your first order and free shipping. Let that sink in 65% off. Meaning that if you just try it for one month and you don't like it, you basically got food for 65% off. There's no risk in trying it out. I definitely recommend you to do so. And if you like it, you're absolutely welcome. It's been a life saver for me. So once again, it's Pog Linkus Oct 65. Try it out around for 65% off your first order and free shipping. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's video. All right, so now we're finally at Windfall. We're going to have to do a couple of things. The first thing we're going to want to do is we want to collect as many rupees as we can because I'm going to have to buy the sale. So we're going to start by going around here and collecting some rupees. All right, so buy the sale. Now, here's why the sale is super important. You cannot enter King of Red Lion's boat without the sale. And we have to enter King of Red Lion's boat because there are certain things known as save flags in this game. So if I were to save right now, no matter where I am in the overworld, the game will put me back to Windfall Island. And that's because the game tries to avoid you from sequence breaking. So it has certain checks in place to avoid you from sequence breaking. And one of which check is where should you be respawn. However, by purchasing the sale, it allows us to enter King of Red Lions. And since that would be the first point in the game where you actually have freedom over where you should respawn, that's where the game just starts checking for wherever you actually are when you're saving and quitting. And that is absolutely necessary for this route to function because we're not just going to be hanging out and, you know, windfall the entire run. So the first thing I'm going to do, by the way, is also this is a little bit of a time save. I really do not want to take the time to, like, watch the delivery bag cutscene, go talk to Madly, talk to her brother, get the bottle and all that stuff. Thankfully, you can skip all of that. Sorry, Madly. 
by super swimming because by super swimming and sequence breaking this game you can collect an empty bottle from the overworld instead first thing i'm gonna do right now is something that's gonna seem very weird but like i said it's very important so remember what i said earlier right that entering king of red lions is mandatory because if you don't enter king of red lions your save flags are not going to be set correctly because then you're just going to keep respawning here but unfortunately due to all the glitches i'm doing i can't just simply enter king of red lions legitimately the game just would not allow that thankfully if you super swim too far outside of the ocean's boundaries the game has an auto void out area so by getting a lot of speed and by just simply super swimming out here into the ocean now i should be able to just void out because i swam so far out of bounds and then spawn in the King of Red Lions. And we officially fix our save flags. Uh, remember I mentioned that I got the empty bottle so that and filled it with water so that I could skip the whole medley sequence? Well, there is unfortunately more glitches to it to be able to skip that entire sequence. And that's where we're getting to right now. So right now, I just performed a glitch known as double storage. So I obtained storage uh, so I can super swim. And then I obtained storage a second time so that I basically can store something while I am super swimming. And I'm gonna use this to my advantage right now. I'm gonna go ahead and walk up on this island right here with storage enabled. I'm gonna try and walk in front of this chest right here and open it. Then I'm gonna go over here and now have chest storage enabled. And I'm gonna use this uh, bomb flower right here to bomb boot myself up on this ledge because while I have chest storage enabled, I cannot climb up a ledge. However, because I have chest storage, I can walk up certain walls I'm not supposed to. So I'm gonna climb the mountain of dragon roost right here. And then I'm simply just gonna jump down right here. And bam, the delivery bag and all the cutscenes associated with it is completely skipped and we can immediately enter dragon roost just like that. Super, super sick. Now this is where things start to get a little bit spooky. We are going to start having to do a lot of different kinds of glitches. So, remember earlier in the intro how I mentioned that there's only a certain amount of keys in the overworld or in every single dungeon, I should say. So, you might be wondering, like, what's the main objective here? How are we supposed to obtain 14 keys? Well, like I said, the objective is not to just obtain 14 keys. It's to have 14 keys on the counter at the same time in the bottom left corner. So, if you check at the bottom left corner, or sorry, the bottom right corner right now, you will see that I have zero keys. That has to say 14. It doesn't mean that I can have 14 and then spend four. That would mean that I only have 10. I have to legitimately have 14 small keys sitting in that inventory slot, which should seem to be absolutely impossible. And you might still be wondering, how is that possible? There's not even enough small keys in the game to go around for that. And how do you even get small keys from one dungeon to another? Because if I pick up these small keys here and go to another dungeon, they're gonna be at zero. Like they, they don't transfer. Well, this is where the bad stuff starts to come in. The first trip to Dragon Roost, because uh, I'm gonna let you know a little secret. We're not just gonna do one trip to Dragon Roost. We're gonna do probably like about seven or eight of them throughout this run. But for the first, very first trip we're doing here at Dragon Roost, thankfully, it's pretty basic and pretty normal. All right, now we have made it about halfway through the dungeon. Now you might have noticed something. If you look at my key counter in the bottom right, my key counter is zero because I have had to spend a total of two small keys already to even get to this point in the dungeon, which is a big problem for this run. And this is where I like to introduce you to the first glitch that we're about to do in this run to try and get around this. And that, my friends, is a glitch known as Back in Time. Now, if you watched Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword speedruns, you might be familiar with this glitch. If you watch Wind Waker, you probably never heard of this glitch. Because this glitch exists in all three games because it actually stems from Wind Waker on the GameCube version because they all use a modified version of the Wind Waker engine. It just happens to be not too useful in Wind Waker. But this category has found a use for this glitch. What I basically did there is I stored that chest. And that chest was a very important chest that I stored. The chest that I stored there was the small key chest. So I just stored a small key into my inventory. Now I'm going to slowly walk down here and I'm going to drop down onto this ledge right here. And I'm going to attempt to get storage again. And hopefully I get it. Okay, we got storage again, beautiful. And now once I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to this small key and store obtaining this small key. 
So looking back at the video itself, I felt that my explanation live wasn't perfect. So let me break down in post what is going on. There are two elements to this trick, back in time and small key storage. There is a great video on the lowest percent channel covering back in time in detail if you are interested. But in simple terms, by either respawning or voiding out at the exact same time that the player performs a soft reset, the player can be put back to the title screen but have control over Link in a playable state. And this is heavily used in other games, such as Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. In Twilight Princess, it's very useful because the title screen Link already has a Pona, the shield, and the sword, just to name a few items. So by getting to the title screen and then saving your game from there, all of those items that you just had will be transferred into your main file. But in Wind Waker, that's not really the case and it's not too useful because our title screen link is at Outside Island with zero items right after the intro. But this is where we can combine this glitch and the knowledge of storing small keys all into one. Once you store a small key, it sort of enters this limbo state where the game will remember that you picked one up and it should be added to the dungeon's inventory, but it will just patiently wait there until it has an opportunity to do so. So if I were, for example, void out, so it would cause it to reload, it will then be added to the inventory. But here, I will use it in a different way, because by storing the small key from this bird and from the chest earlier, and performing a game over right afterwards, I can then do back in time. This will put me back into Dragon Roost, but on a blank file, while the title screen is going on. But if you look in the bottom right, you can see that I actually just transferred the two keys that I just stored over to the title screen, meaning that I can now save and quit my game. This will basically create a brand new save file on outset from the start with zero items. Now you might wonder, why don't you just do this over and over again, Linkus? Well, that's because it doesn't work that way. Because if I got another two keys now and I saved it, I would still just have two keys. Does that make sense? I'm transferring it over, but I'm also erasing whatever was previously there. Now I basically have a blank save file back on outset. Like I haven't done anything in the game. According to the game right now, I have done nothing in the game. I just got done watching the intro cutscene, but there's two small keys in my dragon root. And that's it. That's all the game things I've done. Meaning that it's back to manual super swim. So let's pause it some more. All right, manual super swim two out of three. <laughs> so for this specific trip, because there's more back in time to come actually, but for this specific trick that I'm about to do right now, we are about to do literally the identical thing we just did. So I am just gonna make it easier for your YouTube content and just go through it, okay? I get the Wind Waker, Super Swim to Forsaken Fortress, I beat Forsaken Fortress, I get my sword, da 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 da, go to Windfall, obtain everything I need there, get the sail, Super Swim out, void out, get the bottle, void out, sail back to the island, get double storage, climb up Dragon Roost, enter Dragon Roost, and bam, here we are. Now we're finally back in Dragon Roost, and I got two small keys. Now I'm gonna save here. Now you might think, oh, you're just gonna do the identical thing again, Linkus, and do this like over and over again until you have 14. I wish that was the case, because that would make the speedrun way easier than I'm about to. Unfortunately, no, that is not what we're going to do. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this torch and lit up this chest so we can have this chest spawn in. And then I'm going to have to get storage right now. So I'm gonna get storage. I'm gonna store this chest. And then I'm gonna open this door up right here. Now this is where one of the worst tricks in all of Wind Waker is gonna come into play. This trick is actually one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. I'm first going to go ahead and kill one of the red shoes so that only one red shoe exists in this room. And now is where the bad stuff are gonna come up. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get this red shoe over here and I'm now going to have to damage boost my way up with this enemy. Because remember, I can't climb a ledge. 
Now when I've damage boosted up here, I can't open this chest up because it has a small key. So I have to store this chest. Now there's no ledge where I can get stored, meaning that I have to use this pod to do a Wind Waker dive. Unfortunately, this not only will this chew continue to try and screw me over, getting storage while you already have storage enabled with a pod is one of the worst things in this entire game. So this might take me a long time. I also have a limited amount of tries because he's dealing damage to me every time I fail this. I got it, but I didn't press B fast enough. He hit me. I'm so mad. Last try, or I have to go and reset it up because I'm running short on lives. Oh my god, I got it. Holy sh- Okay. Thank God it didn't fail that. If I would have failed that, I would have actually died. Please drop me a heart. Damn it. Whew. Saved. Okay. Now we're going to open this chest up to cancel out storage temporarily because I do need to be able to climb objects again. So just know that right now I have stored two chests with two small keys. Okay, got it, Chad? I, if I void out at any point or if I die or anything like that, I have to start all over again. So we have to be very careful. And now we're going to use up our second small key that we stored. So now we're back to zero keys. All right, now, remember, currently what I have right now with all the glitches I've set up is I have stored two chests and they are both containing small keys. Now, this explains why I did my original back in time glitch. My original back in time glitch was so that I could start the dungeon with two small keys. And it was for this exact reason. To get into this room, you need to use two small keys. So by having two small keys already, it meant that I could store the original two small keys that I used the first trip to get to this point. This is the entire reason I played through the first 40 minutes of the game the first time around. Now I'm gonna get storage, I'm gonna store this chest, and I'm gonna go out here. Now I'm gonna have to do the same thing I did the first time, but without failing, meaning I have to, uh, with chest storage, go out here, climb up this mountain here, walk over here, get storage. Nice, got it, beautiful. So now we got storage again. Now we're gonna walk around here. Gonna walk very slowly. There we go. And now we're going to store this key. And that's it. Now, if anyone was keeping count, that means that this trip, we stored four small keys, right? The first room small key, the one in the rat's room, the room in the rat's room, and then that's from the nest. And now we're gonna perform the back in time glitch. Now this is why we can't just perform this glitch an infinite amount of times. Because this is not a duplication glitch, it simply just transfers whatever you have stored into the inventory, there is a hard cap, and that is four. That's why we did this twice. The first time it was simply just to be able to start this dungeon with two keys, so that when we got here, we didn't have to spend any. Because I technically didn't have to spend any of them that are located in the chests. But now, I have stored four, which is the maximum amount. That's the entire amount of small keys that Dragon Roost has. There's no more small keys in this entire dungeon. Which is why this is the last trip that we're doing with this glitch. So you might be wondering, okay, I thought that you were just going to do this glitch a bunch of times to get 14 keys. How are you going to get 14 keys in this dungeon, though, if the max is four? Well, I'm going to show you. But first, we have to do back in time again. So... Let's hope we got it. Beautiful. So back in time, performed. We spawn back into the beginning of Dragon Roost. The title screen starts playing. And if you look in the bottom right corner, four keys. It worked. Beautiful. That's it. And save and quit. And there we go. Now we have started the run back at outset again, by the way. But this time we will have four small keys starting off in Dragon Roost. Uh, we're gonna have to do manual super zoom again, but this time it's not a repetitive. That was the last back in time in the entire run. So we're about to do the first part of the run again, which is manual super zoom, wind waker for sake of fortress, but that's it. After that, there's no more repetitiveness and the run changes up drastically. When I am finally back to where I want to be, I'm going to now try and go to Great Fish Island. Great, going to Great Fish Island is very important because Great Fish Island triggers an event known as Endless Night. That will first of all make it possible to be able to achieve Nyra's Pearl from outset, but also more importantly, it gives us the opportunity to obtain bombs from Windfall. Unfortunately, 
When you go to Greatfish, you get slapped with a very long cutscene. So I'm going to attempt to do a cutscene skip right here. It's really difficult, though. Nice, I got it. You can see right there. I started to void out, then he started following me and the cutscene activated. I spawned back into the ocean, into the overworld, and bam. As you can see, absolutely beautiful. And we can now head over straight away to Windfall uh, to get our bombs. And now we are about to start the, our favorite thing in this game. Once we obtain bombs, time everybody to grab your Game Boy Advance and your linking cables to the GameCube that I'm sure you all own. Here it is, because this run is going to be tingle assisted. Anyways, after after getting enough rupees, uh, we're going to connect to the GBA and get that linked up. And you're going to see why we need a GBA. If you never watched a Manuka speedrun before, this is going to make a lot of sense very soon why we have to connect this up. All right, so right now I have double storage and I have Tingle connected to myself. And now I'm going to super sum all the way across the ocean to go over to Forest Haven. And I also made sure to have 70 rupees, which you're going to see why it's so important in a little bit. So by having double storage, I skipped the cutscene uh, of first arriving to uh, Forest Haven. Then we're gonna Windmaker dive to get underneath the water. And then we're simply just going to swim all the way underneath this island. And now one really good mechanic about Windmaker is that if you're in a source of water and there is a water source above you, it will always automatically put you at that higher water source because normally in vanilla gameplay would never be in that situation. And it's just kind of a fail safe to now like be able to get underneath the ocean. And we use that to our advantage right there by teleporting ourselves up to the higher water source so that we can immediately enter the loading zone for the deke tree. Uh, right here, getting the deke leaf should be a very simple task, but it's surprisingly not actually. Uh, so I'm going to kill all of the choo-choos to immediately get them away and start the cutscene to spawn the deke leaf. But if we put our minds together and we start to think about this for a second, you're going to realize something. If you're going up the bulbs to get to the DQ leaf, there is a part where you need to use the grappling hook to grapple over to the last bulb. And we don't have the grappling hook because we haven't done Dragon Roost. So how are we going to get there? Well, that's where the Tingle Tuner comes into play. Basically, there is a glitch in this game known as a zombie hub. This glitch is very simple. When Link gets to zero HP and dies, there is a small period of time in between when he dies and the game over screen starts. And this is where a fairy is supposed to have a chance to kick in and heal you. Now, if you don't have a fairy, there is technically just a small window of time where you have zero HP, but you're dead. Nintendo thought about this and was scared that what if someone tries to do an input during this time? So they made a code that it constantly, every frame, checks if the player performs any input or action. And if he does, immediately cancel it. But this is where we actually fooled Nintendo. Because that means that it goes to a zombie hovering is possible. Because every time you press the B button while you're in midair, you do a jump slash, which gains you a little bit of height. Now, by mashing the B button in midair, you can theoretically gain infinite height. But there's just one issue. When you press B in midair to perform a jump slash, you can't do another one until you've landed on the ground. But since the game cancels your jump slash every single frame, that means that you can technically do a jump slash, no input, jump slash, no input, jump slash, no input. So you can technically do 15 jump slashes per second, meaning that you're gonna gain a huge amount of height in a very short amount of time. So if you're wondering how that looks like, let's do it. Now, as you can see, by getting to zero HP and doing a jump slash and me mashing my B button very fast, I can continue to gain height faster than the game is pulling me down. And I want to average about at least 12, 13 times per second to gain height. But there's an issue. The second I land on the ground, the frame I land on the ground, I'm just going to die. I'm at zero health. That's where the Tingle Tuner comes in. You see I have a green icon underneath my feet? Well, that means my Tingle Tuner is connected. So right now, I just pressed B on my Game Boy Advanced. You might be a little bit confused. What did that do? Well, if you listen up here and you look right here, you see I just got healed. Well, this is where Tingle comes in play because the Tingle Tuner lets you get access to a shop and this shop sells items, one of which being potions. And unlike a normal potion where you have to physically drink it, the Tingle Tuner potion lets you just activate it anywhere by pressing the B button and waiting 10 seconds for Tingle to do a little dance on the Game Boy Advance. Meaning that we can zombie hover anywhere we want 
use the tingle tuner to heal ourselves and survive basically any zombie however we want. There's also other uses for the tingle tuner as well. Either way, we're gonna absolutely break this dungeon, by the way, by using bombs. Bombs destroys this dungeon. And now we're gonna get into the forbidden wood trap. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store this chest and climb up this tree. Now I have chest storage enabled as I enter the main room. There's one small key in this dungeon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is jump over here and leaf to this little area right here. And with chest storage, you can just barely walk up on this thing. So we're gonna walk up here, we're gonna place a bomb right here, and we're gonna get through here. Now I have to store this chest. And unfortunately, getting chest storage on a chest when you already have chest storage is one of the worst things in this entire game. Yes, got it. Okay, finally got storage again, and I was able to chest storage that one, which is the small key chest. And now we're going to beat this dungeon. Now, I remember earlier how I said that when you store a small key, it basically enters this like temporary like void area where it's just waiting to be given to something. And by loading a dungeon or reloading a dungeon, it, it gives that to you. Well, for some reason, entering a boss room counts in the same way internally in the game as leaving a dungeon. It does not count as entering another part of a dungeon. It's considered leaving the dungeon. So even though we are technically reloading a room here, we are not actually reloading forbidden wood. So the small key is still stuck in the, the void zone. I need to be really careful here. I don't have a lot of bombs to spare. One, two, Three, four. Oh, thank God. Three bombs left to spare. Whew. Either way, now we are going to go through this cutscene and uh, leave this dungeon like nothing happened. And the game will shockingly remember the small keys that we stored. You remember that small key I just stored in Forbidden Woods? The game will keep this in mind. Until I save and quit the game, it knows. It knows it's waiting to give it to me. And we're gonna go over to Beetle right here, our good old friend Beetle. All my homies love Beetle. We're gonna enter his boat and we're going to leave the boat to get him to respawn where we want it to be. And then we're gonna get storage right here. Beautiful. Now, if I enter here, nice. As you can see, we got five small keys. It actually worked. So. We just transferred one of the small keys from Forbidden Woods over to Dragon Roost. So we now have five small keys. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of damage here, not to take all of it. And then we are unfortunately gonna have to use one of our small keys here. I know it hurts a lot. I know we worked really hard to obtain these small keys, so it's very sad to have to use them. But unfortunately, this is mandatory. So we're back to four keys now. This time though, I do have some good news. Unlike the previous times, this time, we can just open up this chest without any storage. That's right. We can just open up that chest in all of its vanilla form. And now it is time to go tap a mode. I need to get to the very, very top of Dragon Roost and I need to get there quickly. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be doing a zombie hover. So hopefully we get this first try. Now I'm gonna enter this room and then I'm immediately gonna leave it. This might sound very strange, but basically for later in the run, I will need to have this warp pod unlocked. So I'm going to open this warp pod open and then void out. And because I open and close the door at the top, I actually respawn at the top, which is exactly what I wanted. And finally, after two hours of playing this game and playing through Dragon Roost three times, we can finally obtain the grappling hook. Grappling hook, get! Wow, also vanilla, Chad? What are the odds? All right, right here, we do not have the boss key and I also don't plan to get the boss key, it's very slow. Thankfully, this is one of the easiest skips uh, for skipping a boss key in the game. If you get chest storage, you can just run up that wall, you clip out of bounds immediately, and then you can just roll in between the, the out of bounds wall and the door frame, and uh, bam, you're in. And uh, now we just have to beat the boss. 
Anyways, so now when we've finally beaten Dragon Roost and I've gotten the second pearl, what my objective is right now is to get all the way to Outset. Now, Outset has a cutscene when you get to that island, meaning that if I super swim normally, my game will actually softlock. So I have to do double storage. I need to store the cutscene, basically skip it when I arrive to the island. Also, it's on the opposite side of the ocean, which causes another issue. If I were to get there right now, I wouldn't make it. <laughs> it's just too far. It's as simple as that. Thankfully, there's a really cool trick, which I'm going to perform right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to super swim to the corner of this coordinate and then charge up even more speed. And then I'm going to activate a tingle balloon. Right now, it's basically being activated. And I'm pause buffering the game right now to get it to load this island faster. And then, bam. I can fly, I can literally walk in midair, get an air refill and not sploosh. Meaning I maintained the majority of my speed and I got an air refill. And now I can use the remaining speed I have and momentum to go down to the very bottom of the ocean and go to win and go to outset. Uh, I <clears throat> fortunately hit one island, so well, there's 10 seconds to that, but at least we basically made it. There we go. Go to the middle of that wireless wind to void out. Go put back into King Red Lions. All right, and now let's get the last third pearl. And there we go. All right, gonna super swim from outset all the way to place my, my second pearl. All right, now we just have to do one more super swim and place the third and final pearl to be able to get access to Tower of the Gods. Now, I'm not actually gonna beat Tower of the Gods ever. It actually loses a lot of time, so I have no interest in beating Tower of the Gods, but we still do have to actually go there though because we do need the bow and arrow. And we also do need some small keys from that dungeon. Now, once I'm in Tower of the Gods finally, there are actually two small keys in this dungeon. However, I'm not going to obtain either one of those two keys. For this trip, I actually don't give a crap about small keys. I am only here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to get my bow. So, first things first, I'm going to do a clip known as a ledge clip by basically placing a bomb right next to that wall and then going against that bomb. It's going to push me through the wall and then going to leaf out a bounce and get into this corridor right here and skip the first half of this entire dungeon. All right. Let's go get that hero's bow. Now I'm going to do something on purpose. I know people are gonna say so bad, but I promise you this is on purpose. I'm going to purposely take down my health so that I almost die right here. No, I'm not bad. I have to do this. <laughs> All right, finally got our hero's bow and now we have to do one more thing before we leave. We have to lead the statue that I have here into the main room before I leave. I should not leave it in this current state that it's in. Pick this boy up, carry him into the main room. Oh, 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 oh. And now we are going to die. So once I am here right now, I literally just want to get out of this dungeon as quickly as possible. And the fastest way to get out of here is to have Link die. Because if I do a save and quit, I will lose my tingle uh, tuner connection. And I will lose 30 seconds having to reconnect it. And then we just leave. Now, there are still a couple more things in Tower of the Gods that I do want to do. But it is much faster for the route to do it later on. So we're just going to come back and do that later. We're going to sail up left right here to head over to uh, Northern Triangle Isle because we want to go ahead and um, get Ballad of Gales as quickly as possible, which you don't know is what you get from beating Cyclopes, and it's a song that lets you warp anywhere. Just going to save a lot of time for endgame. All right, so now when we're over here, we're going to sail over here. And I'm going to have to get storage twice here. One time for a chest storage and one time so that I can super swim. And you're going to see why. And this is one of, like, in my opinion, the more cool sections of the run. So I really hope you will enjoy it. But first things first, explode those bombs so that this chest drops down. Then I have to get a storage here. This one is unfortunately really awkward to get. And oh my god, I actually got it second try. That's absurd. Anyways, so we're going to charge up a super swim right here now i'm going to immediately leave here and i'm gonna go to these 
little islands right here. And if you super zoom against these pillars right here, you actually get air refills, meaning I can charge up an absurd amount of speed and have a max maximum amount of air, which is exactly what I need for what I'm about to do, because I'm about to super zoom all the way to Forsaken Fortress. Then I'm gonna clip out of bounds right here. And since I have chest storage enabled, I should be able to do this very quickly because what I can do now is I can go up on this corner, clip up on this rock, climb up Forsaken Fortress over here. And then we're gonna equip this. And then with our chest storage, we're gonna climb this wall right here. And thankfully, because you're never supposed to get too high up on Forsaken Fortress, the very, very top of Forsaken Fortress has no collision. So we can simply just go at the very, very top, go into that loading zone immediately and skip both Phantom Ganon and uh, everything leading up to Helmrock. And now we're in the beautiful part I like to call Cutscene Haven. That's right, we're gonna get a long cutscene here. Then we're gonna get another long cutscene going to Hyrule and another one in Hyrule itself. All right. Now, you might be wondering why did we go here? By getting the light arrows early, we also obtained the fire and ice elemental arrows. And by watching this cutscene, we're not gonna beat Pup again because the objective of this category is not to beat the game right now. But by just watching this cutscene, the game has actually added into our inventory the fully charged Master Sword and the Mirror Shield. It does this every time an item is used in a cutscene. Usually though, you don't notice that effect because it just replaces the same item you already had. But since I've done so many sequence breaks to get here early, it's very noticeable because I'm going from literally a Master Sword to a fully charged one and from no shield to the Mirror Shield. So thankfully, that is gonna open up a lot of possibilities in this end game. All right, now, when I finally enter the overworld again, we're gonna do something very important. To be able to actually complete this game, I do need this skull hammer. And I purposely did not fight Phantom Ganon when I was here the first time, because I didn't have a Master Sword. But now, because of all the glitches I did, I was able to receive one from my Hero Sword, meaning I can, uh, I can finally actually defeat Phantom Ganon. Nice, not bad RNG. We take those. All right, now I don't have the iron boots yet, but thankfully uh, you can actually get here early because by taking out your Wind Waker, it resets the cycle. There's like an internal timer on like one second and how long it can be in the wind until you start sliding. So by continuously taking out the Wind Waker over and over again, you can reset this timer until you're close enough to where you can just turn around and do a jump slash with a skull hammer to break it early. All right, I'm gonna get storage right here and I'm gonna super zoom to Fire Mountain. Now there's no way to climb up to Fire Mountain or even start the island or finish it for that matter without being in the boat because you have to shoot a ice arrow to actually like freeze everything. Thankfully, if you drown against an island, you respawn on that same island. So my objective right now is gonna be to just get to Fire Mountain and, and actually drown on purpose. In this case, it's actually useful. And now we have everything we need to be able to progress to the next part of this run, which is Earth Temple. Now, Earth Temple is going to get absolutely absurd with its route. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and also very difficult, but hopefully we should be able to do well here. Uh, but first step is to simply warp to Outset and head over to Headstone. And this is also where one of the more difficult glitch comes into play. Uh, this this trick slash glitch that I'm about to do is very difficult and it is known as Early Earth Temple. I actually covered this on my YouTube channel for the old dungeons category a couple of months ago if you're interested in checking that video out. But we are going to have to do that trick for this category as well. Wow, okay.
and first try on this room too, beautiful. So you might see a couple of really strange strats right here in this dungeon, and that's because I do not have a medley. That's one of the only few negatives about entering this dungeon early with glitches, is that you're basically locked out of using medley. So you have to do a lot of really difficult tricks to get around this. I'm about to make a safety save right before I open up this chest here, because once I open up this chest and the small key spawns, this is when things starts to get very spooky because once I start picking up small keys, everything has to be flawless until I go to Dragon Roost. And this is a long sequence in between when I start and when I would be done. And now we are off. Now, because I have chest storage enabled, I can get through this dungeon, but it does not mean that it's any less scary because not only is it difficult to get through this, there is a very high chance that like if I fail something, I will void out or something else like in those and like that kind of feel will happen. And if that happens, my run is just like, I have to start over. So I just have to hope I can do everything perfectly first try. Uh, here, we're gonna have to take out the Deku Leaf. <sighs> Barely made it up, thank God. Okay, time for, uh, time for this room. This is one of the rooms I look for towards the least because I don't have any good bomb drops around here. And this is another one of these. I have to get chest storage uh, on top of a chest when I already have chest storage, which is like one of the worst timings ever. So we just have to hope that it doesn't take too long. Ah! Ah! Yes! All right, so by getting storage there again on top of that chest, I was able to store that chest, which has the second small key in this dungeon. And by storing that, I now have two small keys stored, which is very exciting. If it would have hit me there and I would have voided out, my run would have been dead. I should have taken that more carefully. And there we go. We are done with Earth Temple. Yeah, say goodbye to our fully charged master. It will temporarily be downgraded, which means that if I save and quit our game over at any point in between now until I've gotten pretty far into Wind Temple, we are completely and utterly screwed. We're almost done, Chad. Now, remember, we still have stored keys in the game in the background right now from Earth Temple. Yeah, I haven't forgotten about those. And if we did everything right, hopefully, God, please tell me I didn't do anything wrong. We should have seven small keys next time we enter Dragon Roost. If not, I'm gonna be very, very nervous. But first, we're gonna get these iron boots. All right, there's the iron boots. It's time to do it. Let's go to Dragon Roost and see if our key transfer glitch worked. If we did, then we only have Wind Temple left. Please. Show me seven small keys in the bottom right corner. Okay, let's go. Yeah, those keys are locked in now. They can never leave that. All right, now you might think, oh, this is the last dungeon. It's straightforward. We're just going to do this and he's going to be done, right? No, because I have some really cool routes and strats that I guarantee you, you have never seen before. Beautiful. So by doing a really precise shot right there, you can open up that warp pod early, and then you can, with chest storage, clip through that door frame, clip out of bounds, and then I'm gonna leave to be right above this loading zone right here. And if you're if you're flying with your leaf over a loading zone and there's no collision in between you and the loading zone, you automatically pop in there. The reason why that's a mechanic is that like you can't, for example, like leaf over a loading zone and get out of bounds super easily. But with glitches, you can make that much faster as well, which is really cool. And there is the hook shot. Now this is my last safety save for quite a while. So we're coming back up again on one of these moments where we better not mess up. <laughs> Hi, my car. Don't worry, I'll save you. I'm just gonna bring my car down with me, baby. Wee! All right, we're gonna use my car to activate this uh, this fan right here because there's two small keys. One is at the top and one is down here at the bottom. So by activating this fan right here, we should be able to get both of them, no problem. So once I've activated that and that's going on, 
I'm going to enter this room, and I'm going to try and do a bomb boost to get up on the ledge here next to these spikes. And then while I have one ability frames, I can do another jump slash. Beautiful. Then I'm going to get storage, and literally first try. That is so clean. I am popping off. Then we're going to go here, and we're going to fly up. Go, Link, go! Now we have to do one more of these horrendous storages on top of a chest with storage. Oh, baby. That was actually really fast. Third try is really good. All right. Now, we have officially stored two keys in this dungeon. All right. Hopefully, as long as we didn't do anything wrong, once we enter Dragon Roost now, we should have nine keys. Come on. Nine small keys. Beautiful. All right. That's nine. We're almost at double digits. And this will be the first time in your life for probably 99% of you watching this right now that you have ever seen a key counter in a Zelda game go to like two digits in vanilla without modifications or cheat codes in the game. All right, so now we're back in Dragon Roost. We are going to go for two very difficult tricks. And this is, in my opinion, really cool and really fun. So first things first, we have to get to the two small key chests. Now, one of them is down here at the bottom, and we're going to get to that one later, and you will see why. The second one is at the very, very top of this dungeon. I'm going to kill this guy, and I'm going to shoot that eye. Okay, now, step number one, get storage. So this is the small key chest, so we're going to store the small key chest. Then, we want to lose our storage, which might sound weird, but I have to, like, climb a bunch of ladders and do a bunch of stuff to get back. And the easiest way to lose storage without, like, voiding out or accidentally, like, giving you, like, the key back is, remember, if I, like, void out here or reload this dungeon in any way, I will be screwed because the dungeon will be added to this dungeon. And the easiest way, then, to lose chest storage is to open up another chest. We're then going to climb this up right here. And here is a cool little strap, by the way. So, I'm actually stuck here. I cannot leave this because there is a water pressure that's pushing me out. Do you see how, like, I literally can't leave? I'm stuck. You might be like, Linkus, you're completely screwed here. Well, think again. Because when the water goes up here, King of Red Lions will be spawned here and then pushed to the side. And you can hookshot. Hookshotting pushes through the push part of the barrier, allowing you to escape it and get back to the first floor, which is very important because remember, I need to not void out or save warp in any way to not lose the state we're in. But now, here is where we're coming up on some really cool tech. All right, first things first, we're gonna clip out of bounds here. All right. We're gonna store this chest. Now, I'm not gonna risk this because we are right at the end of this run, Chad. We are not risking anything. We are gonna kill these guys because I am not messing around here. Okay, don't fail this, Linkus. It's really bad if you do. Do not fail this. Okay, hold it, everybody. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Okay, so basically, what I had to do right there is I got chest storage, and then I climbed up that pillar. And what I had to do was do a partial ledge clip because I had chest storage, and then do a frame-perfect roll clip to get into the pillar. Now when I'm inside of the pillar, I'm still screwed because the pillar has collision for the actual wall. Meaning when I'm in the pillar, I then have to do a partial clip and do another frame perfect roll clip to get finally out of bounds. So I could then leaf out of bounds to get back to the main hub area to then leave the dungeon. And now everything should have gone correctly. And we should have 11 keys when we enter this dungeon. Let's see. Beautiful. That's it. Look at that. Look at that. Double counter, dude. All right. Three keys away. First key. 
is the very first one in the game. Remember, earlier I did back in time to be able to transfer a couple of temporary keys so I could unlock these doors without actually using the key it's intended for, meaning I can get this one, which is the 12th one. Then I'm going to enter this warp pod, and earlier by a zombie hover, I open up this warp pod here in the middle. Now, this is where things start to get spicy. Normally, you have to use small keys to get through this dungeon, right? Well, that's why it's so useful now when we're coming back when we have all of them. Because if a door requires the use of a small key and you open it from behind, it doesn't take a small key from your inventory, but as long as you have at least one in your inventory, the door will still be open. Meaning I can go from behind and get the 13th key, and then I can open up this one from behind, go over here, break this barricade, and time! That's it, four hours, 14 minutes, and 18 seconds. And we have 14 small keys in the bottom right corner of our screen. That is the maximum amount of small keys that you can hold at one point in a singular dungeon. Now, I think there's only one question you guys might have left. Linkus, why did you go through all this time just to get 14 small keys? And the answer to that is why not? Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you appreciate it. If you want to see more random content like this or randomizer videos or anything else, you should definitely click on the two random videos on the screen right now. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more awesome content as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you appreciate that. And I hope you enjoy me speedrunning the outro as well. This is my first time of speedrunning as well, I hope you enjoyed it. Anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. Later, everybody. Bye-bye.